Und dann heißt der anderen. There are millions of fish there here, guys. Millions. That's one way to let it go. Triple hook up. Never caught a 40 centimetre bass. What are we going to do? Set a rush with or Sonny? G'day, I'm Al McGlashan and welcome to Big Fish Small Boats. Tell you what, it is definitely small boats today. Instead of going offshore, the wind is blowing. But we weren't going to stop fishing, so we've come up the coast and joined Brett and Marty from Complete Angler in Kempsey, and we're on the McClay River. We're going to go and catch a bass. Because what's happening is the bass are moving upstream at the moment. They're on their migration. And I tell you what, these guys have been getting some big bass. In all my life, I've never even caught a 40 centimetre bass. But today, it's bass fishing on the McClay. There is something very tranquil, almost relaxing about canoeing. But it's even better when you hook up. Have a look at this, the way start. We had this perfect plan. What we're going to do is we're going to come around that corner, we're going to get this great shot with a camera, you know, just as we come round. What's Brent do out the back? Yeah, I'm on. First cast. We haven't even started, we haven't got the camera rolling, we haven't even set it up. But still, a bass. Releasing the first bass of the day, we moved around to fish another snag. But before we could, Marty was hooked up. What do you got there, mate? That looks a bit better. Oh, that's a beautiful bass. Geez, we're not doing well with our planning this trip. You know, we'll go down, we'll drift back up, get these beautiful shots. Turn around, all you hear is, yeah, I got a better one. Oh, I think my job as a host might be um, slowly disappearing at this rate. Oh, that is a beautiful fish. Bass fishing in Australia is about these things. And that's hooking. Yeah, man, that's my fish now, mate. And Look at that. Thank you, buddy. All right. Beautiful big bass. You know, we go offshore, we do all these amazing things, but there's something about coming up these little backwaters and flicking, you know, little RMGs around or little, you know, spinner baits around and catching these guys because it's really a form of hunting. The only problem with small boats, there isn't a lot of room. So, we'll measure him out. Oh, no, he's going to go pretty... Yeah. Mate, you've got 45 out of that. That's not a bad fish. 45. Beautiful. Another fish released, and before Brett and I could get a cast in, Marty was on again. How's this? I'll tell you what, that's another magnificent bass, you know. We've been sitting here, well, we, the plan was, and this, this whole day is about strategy, you know. So what we're going to do is going to work downstream a bit. We're going to put um, cameraman on that corner there. Old Dino's going to sit there. We're going to fish this stag. We're going to catch a few fish. It's going to be fantastic. And we turn around, we're about to get in position. The, and guess what? He's caught another one. And this one, I reckon, is going to go bigger. The other one went 45. And you can see they're in the leaky canoe. I don't know. They're slowly sinking. We've only got 100 grand worth of camera gear in there, so it's not too bad at least, you know. I was a little bit concerned there for a while. We better measure him and see how he looks. And this is the thing that with it these days, we don't want to kill them. We want to let them go. And so instead of weighing it, we go by measurement. 40 is really the big one, isn't it? That's measure. 
when it starts going. And so, yeah, and I'll tell you what, this one will definitely go 45, I reckon. Push him over a bit more, yeah. 40, a little bit thing. So I'd say, what, 46, 47 there? 46, 47. That's a seriously good bass. And I still haven't caught one. Coming up, you get a new location with even bigger bass. A new location, new lures, and bigger bass. God, come on. How frustrating. I got absolutely hammered that time. You see the line running, I'm like going, come on. See. Oh, that was, oh, that's, I don't, see if I just, nah, I think he's gone now. I think I've been done. God, that was a good bite. That's the best bite I've ever had from a bass. Just sitting there and just went crunch. Well, I'll tell you what, that was probably the biggest bass I've ever had on my life. I've never really caught a big one. And to have a fish like that, that just, it just smashed me. Like I literally didn't have a chance to wind the handle. Hooked up straight through the weed. I had him on for a bit and then, oh, there's not much you can do when you're stuck like that. Oh. So now I'm gonna re-rig go out and fish here and I'll tell you what even over that other side I've got to get a 40 centimeter it's got to be in here you know they're starting to look really good I'm gonna get one so time but first time to re-rig now one tip we can offer and it's really simple a lot of people get confused about it, is when you're tying on little lures like it's one of my little favorites still some bass which is die not on bass hence the name is that is the knot to use now I use a uni knot on everything, but a uni knot will pull tight down on that split ring. We want this to be free moving. So what we do, we do a loop knot. We do a granny knot in the line. Slip the line through there. And then feed it back in. It's hard to see with this light stuff. Back in, and I'm all, I'm all thumbs. Back in the opposite way. So it goes through the loop. Then you just pull it like so, pull the loop down. Then three twists around the main line. One, two, three. And then feed it back through the centre of the loop between the two lines, like that. And then pull tight. And you can see there, what you end up with is a loop knot. So now this lure will work fine. There'll be no issues with it. It'll sit there running perfectly through the water. If I'd done a blood knot or a uni knot, it would have slid down tight on here and it won't run quite as well. And sometimes that's the difference between catching a fish and not catching a fish. Bass fishing is tough business. So we pulled in for a bit of lunch. This is so ridiculous. We just pulled in for a spot of lunch. Tin ass Marty here goes, I'll have another cast. Another fish, well that's gonna go, that's gonna be close to 40 again. It's another beautiful fish. This is, we've got several and they're all these magic fish. I'm just, like I never expected to show bass fishing like that. But I'm gonna get some underwater of this baby. How good is this? And now it's big fish from the shore. Another big bass. Tell you what, it's McClay River. If you want to catch big bass, this is the place to be. Even I'm catching them, hopefully. And I could do it with a pair of shoes while I'm at it. Oh. Now there's another tip for you. When you go and do these places, don't walk around barefoot. Don't wear thongs like both myself. 
and our cameraman illustriously prepared ourselves with a pair of thongs, which we've both broken. Get some good shoes like these guys are wearing. It's a lot better on your feet. Ow, 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 ow. Back in the canoes, we continued our adventure. Yep, got him. <laughs> Go McGlashan. Not the monster we have had in the past. They're pretty little fish though, aren't they? Hello, buddy. And gone. Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Go McGlashan. The gun. Are you watching and learning, buddy? Here we go. My God, it's got smaller. Okay, that's not what I had planned. All right, that, that wasn't really it. Come here, buddy. There you go, buddy. Grow. Give me a big one. <laughs> Another monster. Could be a monster, it just hasn't grown yet. Bloody hell, look at that. Another little one. God, the Tilson's going off on these guys. Needs a big fish now. And remember, don't forget to check out the website bfsb.com.au. And of course, follow us on Facebook. <laughs> That's a bat. Up next, I finally hooked that big bass. Huh? Running through a massive set of rapids, we finally reached the last pool. Come on, baby. If I get over this bit here. Extreme fishing! No other show takes you to such great lengths in water so deep. One tip I can offer, which is really important for this, for whitewater rafting, for this canoeing, for anything that's a chance of falling in. Luckily we haven't fallen in yet, but eat to have a strap that's waterproof. Sam does these, these are hides. Now it's really simple because once you go in, like that, they float. And the greatest thing is, you can pick them up. And we've got an expensive pair of sunnies like these, like my poor old tonics, which have been scratched and had a tough life, you can get them. So if you tip over in a set of rapids or sunny, these become invaluable. A nice set of snags, it was only a matter of time. Now, when it comes to environmental tips, thanks to Club Marine, these bass are so important, we've got to look after them. So the first thing is, let them go. There's a bag limit of a two? Yeah, two. Two fish per person. That's more than ample. You don't even need that. Most people like Brent here, let them all go. So it's really important to look after them. But more importantly, is letting them go in a healthy state. Now, you can see here that it's a thumb grip in the mouth. That's the first thing. They've got no teeth, so it's pretty easy to handle them. Secondly, when we lift it out of the water, as Brent's about to do, it's called a comfort lift. See how you've got the support here? You don't want to be lifting him up like that on the back of his neck. Imagine that, being held by your jaw and being lynched out of the water. One point of warning bubble else is in here. We've got a seriously sharp little blade. These gills, or gill plates I should say, are sharp as, and we've already had a few cuts from this trip. They can even cut your line at times. So if you handle them right, avoid that bit, hold that, so comfort lift with that, they'll be all right. You can let them go in a healthy state. Oh. 
Make yourself the complete angler by winning the ultimate fishing prize, a Bluefin Drifter 3.8 with casting deck and full floor. Powered by a Honda BF24 stroke, sitting pretty on a dumb beer trailer. Plus safety equipment and full comprehensive boat insurance with Club Marine. Registered, it's on the water, but that's not all. There's a thousand dollars worth of Shimano gear to get you into the action. That's a total of twelve thousand dollars in prizes. And how easy is it to enter? Just buy any product at the Complete Angler for your chance to win. For full terms and conditions, visit completeangler.com.au. The Complete Angler, supplying fishermen with the complete fishing experience since 1967. Gotta be one in there. Oh. Yeah, they really hold up, don't they? I used to have a pet bass and it would oh. Oh, nice. This is probably the only fishing show where the host doesn't catch a really good bass, but everyone else seems to do it. Yeah. Oh, yep. Oh, it's a double! Oh, yes! <laughs> How's that? You guys can't get close to you. I'm like, yep. Oh, that's another nice fish too. Oh! <laughs> Have a look at that. Oh, God. I don't want it. That is unreal. Look at that for a back. Mine bigger than yours. <laughs> Mine's even bigger. That's a good fish, that one. Have a look at that. <laughs> One's definitely bigger. What a beautiful bass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> How's that for a quick release? We end up with a smaller one, and he went, but you know what? That was a freaking awesome fish. And to do that as a double hookup, that was about as good as it gets. Oh, I should get hooked up more often. <laughs> As the day progressed, I persisted and finally I got that shot at a PB bass. Work it out through there. Come on. It's not doing anything. Oh, look at the colour on that baby. Oh, he hasn't done anything. He just sort of sat there for a second. Here we go. Oh, that is a good bass. Oh. My God, he's just sitting there. He didn't do much at all. Go the McGlashan. My little Tilson's on fire now. It's starting to get him. Look at that. That's got to go, what, 45? Look at that. Take two. <laughs> That's a bass. I reckon it's bigger than yours now, Marty. That is a bass. That is one fat mother. And you know the amazing part is that what we did was... They've got those sharp gill rakers, so it makes it a little bit hard on them. But look at that. This is what we came here for, you know. Have a look at this. This is it. Look at that. The hook is only just in. Look at this. Slides out. Gone. Oh yeah, he's healthy as. So you can see it's a true bulk of this fish, like that. That is my PB bass. What do you reckon, 47-ish? And then, when you bring him over, you can even wet the fish or wet the arm um, thing. So in this case, we can wet the fish. And then, so when you put him down... Oh, 40... What's that, 46? 46. That is a beautiful fish. 46. Whoa.
come in here, boys. Come in here for the final. I tell you what, Brent rang me and said, you will catch a heap of bass. It's awesome. The river's low. It's absolutely stacked. Marty went up and caught, what was, that, what was the size you caught the other day? Uh, 52. 52 centimetre bass. And he said, today, don't you worry, Al. We'll get you a 40 centimetre. After he caught three, I think it was, and I ended up catch, finally catching one. In fact, you know what? There's only one person that didn't catch a 40 centimetre <laughs> plus bass today. Won't mention that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what, though. If you want to go to a good place and catch bass, drop in and see these boys at Kempsey Complete Angler, because we're, what, five minutes away? Yeah, probably about ten, yeah. Ten minutes away from Kempsey, and we're getting fishing like that, which is, well, it's the best bass fishing I've ever seen. And it's one of those few rivers that McClay's got nothing. There's no weirs, there's no dams, there's nothing. That's why it's such a rich fishery. Now, there are three tips I can offer that are going to help you catch more fish. Firstly, run a mix of lures. You saw we did it. We ran the Tilsons, we ran deep divers, we ran a real mix, and you saw that during the day it changed. Secondly, you've got to use a canoe. You can get access to those areas. And finally, and this is probably the most important, make the effort to go that little bit further. If you go and put in a few extra hours to go around the next bend that no one does or just up to the next pool, you'll catch a lot more fish.